Hello again, folks. I'm back. Um, today I'm going to talk about um, two things. I'm going to talk about my um, MEN 220. Um, it's a room correction system. It's a Macintosh MEN 20 room correction system in my audio rack here. And I'm also going to do the talk about the um, the room treatment that I did. Question is, um, I've asked several times what room treatment should i get um, i already have the mem 220 is that good enough as far as room treatment goes for my for my listening room but i do understand that on a individual case by case and on the listeners preference what they hear in the room so the question was um is it enough to just have my mem 220 and just uh, uh do the analysis for the room and just be done with it? Or should I supplement that with room treatment that I did right here? So some people says um, it's, it's best to just use the, the, um, the um, room correction device and just be done with it. You don't need no room treatment otherwise on any panels on, on the walls. Some people says, you know, you need panels on the wall instead of the um, room correction system. So I'm getting conflicting answers, you know. So I thought the best thing for me to do is to try it for myself, see what works for me, right? It's just like when I was doing um, um, cartridges for my, for my setup, my, um, my turntables. I would, read, I would read a lot of reviews and they tell you how this cartridge sound um, um, good. That's cartridge sound ba um, bad, use um, MM, uh, movement magnet instead of moving coil, and, and so forth. Then I went out and I bought myself some cartridges and I tried them for myself. So I could listen and be the judgment of what I'm listening to. So, um, so I ended up just using moving coil cartridges. Anyway, that's another subject, but I just um, say that to say, I'm trying both the MEN 220. I'm going to analyze the room now because seeing that I put all these panels on the wall, I have to um, adjust the room again uh, with respect to the MEN 220 so that it can analyze the room. So um, what I will be doing, I will be testing the MEN 220 in the focus position, and then I'll, I will use the bypass when I just want to hear what how the room react to the system when I'm when I, I don't have the room correction system turned on. So I will just put it on the bypass mode. And then when I want to um, see how it sounds when I put the um, MEN 220 on, I will just go to the focus position because the Macintosh it has this is a remote and it has several different modes you can put it in global focus positions or bypass mode so after i i calibrate the room with the men 220 i will be just flicking through the different modes to see what which one sounds better then i will be able to tell oh i didn't really need this panel or not you know and then of course i have the the, the option of always go bypass or always use my focus positions. So, so this is what I'll be doing. This is a, the microphone here. So I will be taking several um, measurements in the room. I'll be taking one, two, three, four, five, six, and of course, I'll be doing pushing the microphone up into the ceiling, seven, and then one on the floor um, with the microphone pointing towards the floor. And uh, then I should then then the then the MEM 220 is going to do its calibration, and um, and uh, I hope I get a good reading because each position you get a reading from zero to a hundred percent. In some cases, I get up to 70%, in some cases, 
I get 70 per, I mean, 80%, some, play, some measurements give 100% sometimes um, based on what I did before um, when I use the MEN220 to measure the room. So that's what I'll be doing today, but it's kind of a boring little, little endeavor. So uh, I, w I don't think I will bore you through this um, process here because it's going to take some time. So all you will be listening to is the sound giving a voo -voo 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 uh, sound from both the, um, the subwoofer and the main speakers, right? So I will be sitting right here. And this is the first position, the first listening position. Our, uh, Macintosh call it the focus position. So I'll be doing it from there. That's the first position and then measure the rooms. Measure the room, um, do, the, do the room measurements with the MEN 220. So that's what's gonna happen right now. So I am going to um, pause this for a while and, um, and come back when the measurements are done. So what's going on here is um, as, as I move the microphone, the microphone around, this is a microphone, it's on its um, tripods. So I have to move it around to several um, measurement position in the room. So you hear the noise coming from the, the speakers. So this is the MEN 220 room correction system. So right now this is saying that measurement it just took is 60.69% of room knowledge. So I'm going to do that one over. And I would um, place it in like about four or five different positions in the room. So you get the idea. So this is a boring process. So I'll pause the video again and come back when I'm finished. Okay, so um, I have the room set up to give me a, a few um, uh, measurement, measurement positions, including um, three focus positions, right? The first focus position is, to the, is, is on the left uh, seat on the couch. And the second focus position is on, the, is on the right seat in my couch. And the third uh, focus position I put where I sit right in the middle between the two, um, the two seats. 
uh, of the couch, right? Now, the reason I do that is because um, to get even wear on the couch, because if I sit one place all the time, it will wear out my couch. I don't want that. So I set it up so that um, I can go from sit in the left or sit in the right or sit in the middle to get even wear on my couch. And then I can select focus position one, two, or three. Now, the measurement position we're taking from the far end of the room, right over there, far end of the room, and, and where I'm standing uh, uh, in line with the far end of the room. That's two. Then I, I went, took one on the floor when the mic was pointing down. And then I took one behind the couch over here, point, point the mi microphone to the wall right there. And then I did another position up in the ceiling where I put the tripod on the center table and point the microphone into the ceiling. Now, um, the reason, uh, the reason if, you, if you notice, I, I left everything in the room as I normally would have it. I, some people might say you should have cleared out the, the, the cushions and the center table and my records, but I did that uh, for the sole reason that I always have these things in, in this room when I'm listening. So my, my records are here. These are my go-to records. So if I want to listen something on a spin, I just grab one of those and just listen. And the cushions are always there. So I don't want to take measurement with empty room and then put back the cushion. Then, you know, it, 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 you, it wouldn't be accurate reading if you do that. Same for the center table. A lot of people says, Take out your center table. Don't listen to music with center table in your room. But I leave my center table, my lamps, my side table, both far and near for that reason, because those things are always in the room. So I took the measurement just as the room is. So no, um, no um, false reading. You know, if, if MEN calculates it correctly, then it will calculate with everything in the room. Now, the next step is to um, perform a listening test, you know, go from focus one position, focus two and focus three. Then I will hit the bypass button on the, on the um, MEN220. There it is. It's got a, it's got a bypass, a global, the, go the global button, um, it's, it, it, it doesn't, when you hit the global button, it doesn't matter where in the room you are, you still hear the sound um, well, for the entire room. But the focus position is just focus on that area where you, where you left the mic. And then you have the, the, um, the bypass mode, which um, uh, defeat the, uh, the MEN 220, and the signal just goes straight straight from the preamp to the amplifiers and subwoofers. So, so that's what I'll be doing uh, at some point, um, doing some listening tests to see um, how, it, how it sounds. Then I, can, then I can decide whether to, um, to uh, take the MEN out of the system completely or take the panels off the wall if if uh, if the MEN sounds better, so I'll be you know comparing and contrast between these two um, room correction system, the um, the wall panels and the MEN room correction system. So um, uh, I know this is a a challenge for you to understand without having you know um, seen it done. Uh, in real, where where um, you would you know touch the correct buttons on the MEM to get the room the room correction going, and then it's it's kind of a tedious process. It's not do, too difficult, but it's just um, kind of boring. I couldn't um, go through the entire thing with the video because it's just just noise you're gonna hear, and I can't demonstrate the differences between. The room correction, MEM room correction, and the wall panels. You know, it just wouldn't be accurate on YouTube. So 
I will have my next listening session is about might be two weeks from now where I'm going to be inviting some friends over to have them um, take a listen and, and get their feedback. That's the only way. But it all boils down to me. If it sounds good to me, then that's where it's going to stay. If it doesn't sound good to me, then that's where it's going to stay too. Um, I'll just, it, it just come down to me. I'm the bottom line. Bottom line, you know, just, just what I hear, not what anybody hear. But I'll just, for the benefit of the doubt, I'll just um, have some other people listen to it and, and hear what, get their feedback. Um, so um, I did this video just to um, to clarify some things with the um, with the room correction system, like the MAN two hundred and twenty, and there are many others out there. Um, I, I had a subwoofer once. Um, it was a um, JL Audio subwoofers, and they they have their own room correction system in the subwoofer. And that was that was a killer. That was a killer subwoofer. It was so powerful I had to take it out of here because the sound pressure level was so high it, it just hurt my ears. So I couldn't I couldn't keep it. But it was it was if this room was a bigger room, if my listening room was bigger, I would definitely um, um, keep those um, those subwoofers. But um, the limitation of my space um, doesn't allow it. It would kill my ears. Anyway, YouTube, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.